previously on Big Brother. We're coming in for the second to the last episode of Big Brother 2 with a lot of Big Brother 2 action coming your way. A quick note, we rebranded. So we are, in fact, the Diary Room podcast with a bunch of uh, different sub podcasts. So you're watching previously on Big Brother. We'll have some travel counseling later on when Survivor eventually comes back. And, of course, um, some other uh, Brant Steele type wheel things, which you saw last week, which will be coming back next week. And just for an update, this will probably be a bi-weekly series with the other wheel series being bi-weekly. But without further ado, let me welcome in two of my co-hosts. Uh, so I, it's not apparent what we're doing yet. I was dressed as Dr. Will. I switched and put a jersey on to be Mike Boogie, but it's not about me right now. Uh, it's about my co-hosts who also happened to randomly, we did not plan this, dress as a character from Big Brother 2. So, Cassie, would you like to join? <laughs> hey, <laughs> so, guys. <laughs> so, Cassie. Free live from Louisiana. <laughs> down from the bayou, right. we have Cassie Dallas. Yeah. Did I start slurping some uh, some crawfish? Some crawfish. Uh, whatever you think works best. Uh, you might take uh, Mike Boogie on a date with you. Not me, but the actual Mike Boogie, even though we said right. he had some auspicious, weird things going on in his life. But I think what's even funnier than this is uh, we'll welcome in Luke now. Luke, welcome to the show. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, yeah, my name is Luke, a.k.a. <laughs> AKA Daddy, um, in case you didn't know. <laughs> I fucking can't. <laughs> I, I logged on late because my laptop is broken, so this is very inside baseball. But I just log on to see, first of all, Cassie, which had me fucking dead. And then Luke's, like, I must have been slow because of my Wi-Fi, and then he popped up a second later. And I, I've been in shambles for the past five minutes trying to pick up the pieces. Um, oh, man. But, How did we get here? <laughs> again, this was not planned. We just said, let's surprise each other and dress up as a character from Big Brother and see if we know who it is. I mean, and this, yeah, this is the most. It's the, the same person. It's, it's the, the most same, iconic look of the, the same season. ego. Hundred percent. Yeah, I, I was thinking basic white frat boy, which is either Boogie or Doctor Will, and you guys went for the home run, which is great. Um, we, before we got on, we were talking about how great this season is. So, if you are watching for the first time today, we do have a lot of, uh, I think, like three episodes of previously on Big Brother so far, which is all Big Brother Two up until now. Uh, we're starting somewhere around episode, I think it's 14, and going up through episode 19 of season two, um, which is a great cohort of episodes, which we were just talking about before we got on. Um, instead of doing a, we're going to still be doing a deep dive, but instead of going like point by point, we all just wrote some discussion questions to try and get it uh, flowing that way. Um, but I know Cassie might have mentioned it. Cassie, what was your initial impression of these sets of episodes coming into us talking now? I know you mentioned it before, but... Yeah, I mean, this set of episodes really, like, the season picked up for me. I mean, I'm sorry, I can't take this seriously in the south there. Um, but this set of episodes just felt like the first time people kind of, like, flipped the switch and, um, you know, started to think more strategically, especially, like, Nicole has really come into this re big strategic role. Um, I also would like to say what my favorite quote is of this set of episodes in classic fashion, and it is, quote, I don't think he knows what tops was. Oh, so that, is, that is all I'm going to say about the set of episodes. <sighs> what did you think, Luke? Oh, man. Well, I'll have some quotes that I'll read out later. There's some great Will quotes. But, um, yeah, so we left off. You know, we saw Hardy win HOH. And um, mm -hmm. so coming out of that, it really does seem like in these set of episodes, Nicole and Hardy are really, like, the powerful force of this house. Like, they yep. are... Uh, large and in charge and right away we see like Kent and Bunky are on the bottom of everything mm -hmm. um, very clearly like it's not hidden at all but this has been a great set of episodes I do feel like we spent a lot of time kind of yada yada and getting out chill towns so we saw you know Shannon and Mike leave back to back but now like people do not want Will out and uh, Top is forced to turn on each other very sadly yeah and it's like a game of pairs right now and at least for the sure. second second boot we're seeing uh Krista and Monica being labeled as like that power pair because they are great friends uh, by Nicole who does win HOH. So it's interesting to see that that's the perceived pair. But like you said, like Nicole and Hardy have that little thing going. We even see Will try to slide in there in different types of combinations of pairs because he doesn't really have that person he can latch onto except for when he gets to talk to Nicole. And it's also great that uh, Bunky is also just chilling there. And towards the end of the episodes, like episode 18, 19, which we'll get into, but Bunky is like, it, Bunky and Will are just fucking around. They're like, like, oh my god, we're like, we're in a 
clients, guys who are we voting for? Like, Bunky, who are you voting for? And Hardy's like, shut up. So it's funny that all these pairs are coming yeah. together, and now we're left with this. Honestly, I can't believe people don't talk about Sweet Nasty more. Like, that is I, one of the best <laughs> alliance names of all time. Like, yes. I mean, there's some great alliance names in Big Brother history. Like, later, there's one called the Quack Pack, which I'm obsessed with. But, like, Sweet Nasty <laughs> is underrated. I want to bring, if I'm ever on Big Brother, like, that's what I'm bringing back. Like, my alliance name is Sweet Nasty. <laughs> Sweet <laughs> Nasty. <laughs> Are you the sweet or the nasty, Luke? I, I'm, a, I'm a pastry chef, so I feel like I should be sweet, right? Sweet. But I'm kind of a nasty player. Maybe I'm both. You are sweet nasty. <laughs> you alone are the sweet I am body. I am body sweet nasty. <laughs> You're reincarnate. All right. So just to break it down, I do want to point out the iconic. I, I kind of thought about learning the dance, but I, I thought that might be a little much for the boy band video. I'm yeah. bummed we didn't see the whole thing and we just saw little clips of it because it did seem pretty iconic. Yes. Um. Whereas the rest of the video, don't know. I'm sure it's I can find it online. Yeah, I'm glad Boogie got to be there for that. And, you know, we, we got to see it, like, kind of post-mortem Boogie. So that was kind of a nice, <laughs> like, oh, it's kind of like a nice moment to honor Boogie. Like, he is, like, boy band type, so. Yes, frosted tips and all. Very appropriate, very appropriate. Yeah. All right, so we see Hardy win HOH. Mm-hmm. And then we see lots of moves be made here. Um, were you guys surprised with who we nominated? Well, I know, Luke, you've like seen this season before, but what did, what did you think? Honestly, I did not remember who we nominated, but the whole episode was just like, it's oh, it's very obvious, like, he's nominating Kent and Bucky, right? Like, that was right. what the episode was leading me to believe. And we also mm-hmm. see that Hardy and Nicole are, like, swooping in to pick up Will, the last member of Chilltown. He has nobody. And so they are really working hard on him, it seems like. So I was a little bit surprised, actually, to see Will nominated. And I kind of remembered that Will was nominated, but I wasn't 100% sure. But yeah, the episode, that was kind of a blind side, I feel like. Definitely a blind side. And I don't think it was necessarily the worst thing, just strategic-wise, because like, if Will is that loose number, I don't think he's necessarily coming off as a goat, but he is that loose number, like we are saying before with all the pairs. So Will is someone mm-hmm. that you can tack on to a pair and make it a three, which is like great in the sense of the numbers game they're playing. And I think that's exactly what they're trying to pull. Um, but right. then, of course, like it's 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 Kent and Will that go up, which is, uh, it's at the, I thought it made for more interesting of a round, even though Kent versus Hardy would have been interesting to see where the lines were drawn. Um, Whereas Hardy or Kent kind of just blew his game up in the end. and was kind of just like going off on people, which was iconic. Like he was, he's literally like Shane Powers from Panama and Survivor when he just like was nicotine (laughs) withdrawing and like couldn't do anything because he was so cranky. Um, but still made it far. Like, Kent made it way far than I thought he would. Great parallel, considering the nicotine withdrawal aspect of things. Yes. Our fallen angel, Shane Powers, on yes. our um, Brant Steel podcast. Check it out <laughs> if you haven't seen it. But, like, what an iconic player. And then yeah. there's Kent, who I did not think resembled Shane Powers in the slightest. Kind no. of had a Shane Powers-esque move when he had no nicotine. Yes. So... Yeah. That is the move. I also think on top of it, nominating Will was a a good call on Hardy's part because that doesn't really piss off anybody from, you know, his main alliance. Like nominating Kent kind of, you know, made Bunky upset, but like they felt like they could deal with Bunky. Nominating Will, since Will is kind of that lone wolf, doesn't really have like lasting repercussions. Yeah, I've been impressed this whole season watching it back, how much strategy is actually in season two. Like when I was watching it for the first time, I had seen a lot of other Big Brother seasons before that. So I was like, the first time I watched it, I was kind of didn't really think it was as strategic. But when I, but watching it back now, I'm like, this is actually pretty high level gameplay considering where we are in reality TV competitions. Yeah, I mean, if you look at where we were in Survivor at the same time period, like the strategy here for like outplays the strategy that we've seen in Survivor up until this point. For sure. Definitely. A few yeah. years ahead for sure, which is like crazy. This is like reminding me of like Amazon Pearl Islands type strategy and this is a clear probably two years before they even recorded that so it's insane mm-hmm. like where the level yeah. they're at yeah something yeah. we've seen in this episode is like hardy really like flips the switch and decides he suddenly wants to win the game i feel yeah. like up until now it was like oh we just gotta get out chill town right and he kind of maintained that facade by nominating will a little bit but yeah. I mean, he says, like, it's not just about getting out of Chilltown. Like, I want to win now. I'm not just playing for for Krista to win. And that kind of gets blown up even further later. But even early on, before, like, all the Krista Monica drama, he decides that he wants to win. He's not just here for charity. It was hard to see Krista go because I think she was a really great player. But at the same time, like, I don't want to see Krista just get handed. Like, I want her to deserve it. Yeah. 
It's it's true, and it's like she shouldn't be handed it, and it's also like now that people are upping their games, like she kind of had to hit that level as well, which she was starting to, but it was like almost like everyone else around her just made that decision for her, which if there was some sort of mechanism where you can get yourself off the block, then that would be a great time to have it. But sure. in this, in these first few seasons, there's not that, that thing you can have. So it's kind of like she's stuck. She's stuck where she is. And it's like, okay. if that was a thing in the season, I'm sure she would have done for it. Cause she would have known it would have been really good, but it sucks. I, and I wrote initially like as a question, like does Hardy return? And that was towards the beginning set of episodes after watching the last episode earlier today. I'm like, does Krista return? Cause she's a great character. And to me, She's, as you guys see, the most iconic look of the season. Yeah, she was an iconic player socially and obviously appearance-wise with the nice hair towel. Um, you know, can't be can't be Krista. So I want to just take a jump into the first week's food challenge that we yes. saw, which was disgusting challenge. Um, basically, everybody got to write down their favorite food or like, sorry, their favorite dinner. And they got really excited because they got to sit down and see it and they had to drink it. They had to eat it in a certain amount of time, and then yeah. the twist was revealed that they had to drink it. Um, <laughs> you know, some of these didn't look too, too bad. Like, they all looked pretty gross, but some of them worse than others. Like, Krista's with a quarter pounder with cheese and a filet <laughs> of fish. Also, Krista, like, girlfriend, get a better favorite dinner. Like, if your favorite <laughs> dinner is a quarter pounder with cheese, a filet of fish and some fries, like, I'm sorry, but that's, like, a filet of fish is gross. Can yeah, I, not, like I, I can't I, even I, imagine it under that. I do not blame her at all for not get, being able to get that thing yeah. down because I, I mean, hate fish in general. <laughs> that <was laughs> so good. that's out. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like that would be the worst. Like blended seafood, just that fishy smell. I mean, and Hardy says when the when it starts out, like anybody who doesn't drink, that could be a reason I nominate you because I want to eat. You know, I like food. And he's really like coming off as such an asshole in that yes uh, food challenge. He's like, well, I'm gonna drink too just to prove that I can, and you know, I'm a man. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is absolutely disgusting. I was surprised that as many people w were able to do it, you know, yeah. well, especially like, will, I was really grossed out. I, I agree. I think, uh. I mean, I love fish, like both the animal and also the food and like Wonder sashimi is very <laughs> good to me and will drink it in less than 15 yeah. seconds. And I was just like, generally very impressed. The other, one of my favorite quotes oh. also came up during this, um, whole experience and it was. I'm going to let you guys guess who said this quote. Okay, are we ready? Yes. I'm ready. It's, quote, I'm a meat guy. Was it Kent? <laughs> it was that, that was going to be my guess. I think I remember that. I remember being like, wait a minute. Like, <laughs> you are so on the nose with gay culture, but oh, you just don't man. realize it. <laughs> yeah. Just wait till the exit interview, Pat. I can't. I literally can't wait. Okay. <laughs> I know that uh, we were wondering, what would everybody's blended favorite meal be? Yep. Um, so I had a question, a follow up question about this discussion item. Is it like, what is one of your favorite meals that you would eat blended? Or is it like, I'm either way, I think whatever way it goes, it's fine with me. I was just like, would you guys eat your favorite meal blended? Or which one of your favorite meals would be good blended? But any other conversation starter would be great. Because I think this is fascinating. <laughs> um, you know, I like one of my favorite, I'd say like one of my favorite meals to have is like a good I'm on the same page as Will here for perhaps the first time ever. Um, but I really like sushi and like the raw fish sort of a vibe um, blended. I think that would be pretty gross. Yeah. Um, so there's that I don't know yeah that's all I think a good ratio and this is like I mean this is obviously going to sound good but like this is not my favorite like dish but like a bowl of cereal with like two-thirds cereal and like one-thirds like milk I would drink almond milk but like that type of thing blended together like there's a lot of bars like uh like milk bar type places in New York City that have that and it's mm -hmm. so good that's just like milk that they like strain out the cereal I guess oh but, like, it's my favorite pastry chef yeah, yeah, wait, really? From New York? Yeah, Christina Tozzi. Yeah, literally. I'm like obsessed with her. Yeah, so like they have like a literally like Lucky Charms milk and Frosted Flake milk or ice cream made out of that milk. But yeah. I think if you like, I love Frosted Flakes. So if you blended that really finely together, I think that'd be really good. But then other yeah. things that would gross me out, like I really like, like I do really like pizza, even though I can't really have gluten. I feel like that would be vile. Like it would be disgusting. But like I don't know, I would try it. Maybe it's not that bad. Well, like I also think the cheese. That, like would the cheese, like, even blend up? I feel like you get, yeah. like, bits of, like, stringy cheese or, like, get caught in your throat. Yes. Is yes, that, right. that's what would fuck with me. Yeah. I was thinking about that because I, lo I love, like, fondue, like, a good fondue with, like, some Gruyere and, like, Emmentaler cheese yes. with, like, some wine. 
Like if you blend that in with the bread, would it be like basically just more like breaded or watered down like fondue that you're drinking? Or would it be like the texture I'm not sure would be good, but it could also not be bad. Right. If the texture is good, then most things you can, you can try and analyze the taste. But if the taste is weird and then the texture, like Luke said, like with stringy and cheese, that would be too much for me. Yeah. Like, I think a burrito wouldn't be bad blended. Just, I mean, burrito, I wouldn't say it's yeah. like my favorite food, but I mean, I do like a good yeah. burrito. I think a burrito probably wouldn't be bad because the flavor wise, you're already eating something with everything together. True. Um, True. You know, so the t- as long as the texture was not awful, I think maybe I could get that down. I agree. What, like, what would you guys rather do? Also, sorry, I didn't add this to dis- the discussion list, but what would you guys rather eat? Um, Krista's blended thing with the filet fish and the quarter pounder with cheese and fries or a balut? Ooh. Oh. Um, I think I'd have to go with, like, the like the mix shake at that point yeah so like like chris does because i just really I mean, any any fish flavor that's blended would just be it's not blended but like any fish flavor that just like is raw like that it would be too much for me i seriously oh, can't stand no it. that's what i would i would have chris's shake over the blue like yeah and the blue freaks me out because it's like you can see what it is like you can yes. tell it's like an, an, a chicken fetus <laughs> no <laughs> oh that's a, what i meant I don't like the balut because it's too, like, raw. I thought it was Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I just am also, I also don't like eggs for the same, I just don't like the idea of, like, cracking open eggs. So so that's why I'm like, a balut, like, is, like, an egg without, like, the shell that protects it. It just scares me. (laughs) I think for me, the, like, blended grossness of the, like, I can't, I can't decide in my head what texture is worse. Like, the, eating the balut, A, would make me very sad. B, like, the crunchiness of, like, the bones and the beak and stuff gross me out but also I think the texture of like a blended filet of fish would be <laughs> equally as bad so I I'm not I'm not really sure which one would be worse because at least the balloon you can just kind of go and it's like small and you can just eat it really quickly right. with the filet of fish I mean that that was like a 20 ounce Ooh. glass of that I mean you, you're like chugging that like I think I would rather almost just like Ugh. get down a quickly rather than have to chug that for 20 seconds yeah I bet they were like really full like 20 ounces is is a lot <laughs> You that's know? a lot of liquid in like for water that's a lot like for a yeah. blended balut or blended yeah. like mcmeal that's too much it's like over a pint of of food um yeah. yeah i feel like i would have gotten like an indian curry or something and that would have been like it's kind of already blended you know what i mean yeah. and I feel like if the meat's blended in that would have been fine would yeah. it have a meat in it your curry yeah i mean i usually get like you know chicken uh tikka masala or something like that yeah That'd be yeah. mad good, I feel like. Yeah. It's like yeah, that would be good. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. I would I might just go try that after this. <laughs> yeah. Uh so one thing that came up after that is obviously Ken just trying to quit smoking. And he tries to like barter for Bunky cigarettes, and then Bunky says that he doesn't even smoke, but he brought cigarettes into the house to barter with. How do you think of that? That is like a malicious kind of like weird thing to do. Did you guys have any thoughts on that? I think it showed me that like Bunky is here to play. He, like, goes around acting like he's this, you know, like, just tell me who to vote for. Tell me who to vote for as long as it's not me. Like, I'll vote for whoever you want. But then in reality, he's sneaky and brings in cigarettes, even though he's not going to smoke them. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's sneaky. But, like, some of the stuff he does later, like, pisses me off so bad. Like, not once, but twice in the diary room, he says, I'm just Nicole and Hardy's puppet. I'm like, what are you doing? You, like... I was hoping that he was, like, going to elaborate, that's what they think, but I'm actually going to do this. And it's, like, you're literally acknowledging that you're just being someone else's bitch in the game, and that is, like, not okay. But, uh, yeah, that little, like, smoking comment was just, like, super weird to me. Um, And another great thing that happens is, you know, I don't know if your opinion has changed on Will at all, Cassie, but um, I love the segment of Will is convinced Nicole is falling in love with him. That was... (laughs) yes hysterical and then like nicole tries to get in the shower just to prove to will that like uh, or to try and call his bluff basically um and then she ends up folding first it's a great sequence oh my gosh it was like they were playing chicken or something like a really were, weird uh, version of chicken where it's like will is naked in the shower and nicole's getting in also naked and i was like what is happening here i thought i it, it didn't surprise me that nicole folded first um oh, yeah. you know as much as yeah. i disliked will I do appreciate that he, like, he's clearly, like, playing a character right now, and he's, like, playing a villain. Like, do I still think he's probably an asshole in real life? Yeah, for sure. But, like, at least he's kind of playing this villain role in the game, which makes it super fun to watch. And also his relationship with Nicole, how they're, like, both very snarky. Yes. Um, 
you know, as as Will later put it, uh, we we have nothing in common except for the one thing we both have in common, which is that we're both very attracted to me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, Will, I mean, this season got very serious, I feel like, starting in this set of episodes, like beginning with the Kent boot, um, that having Will in the house was just like, a breath of fresh air like he adds so much levity to the house where everybody is just so distraught everybody's crying at every nomination ceremony and will is like saying i came in here saying i was gonna lie and i've lied so <laughs> nothing's new like you guys know what to expect from me right That's why I like right. in the beginning set too because no one was like i feel like he's always where he's at serious wise like when everyone wasn't really serious in the beginning he took it way too seriously to the point where they were like oh it's funny you named it chill town because you were being nice and you were xyz but now everyone's being like way too serious and he's just like still at that same level but everyone's so beyond him so he's kind of just like literally chill now compared to everyone else which i can emp i think that's where my empathy came for him because i feel like if i was playing this game that's exactly how i would be and that's exactly how i play orgs and like other types of games i'm just like i'm just gonna be at the same level and it's like how much i tell you is like what's gonna come out type of thing so i think that was like a, i don't know if that was an intentional strategy maybe that's just because it was so early on in big brother that it just so happened that his personality matched up with it really well but it's nice to see now because that game of chicken was like ridiculous i was watching it and i was like wait doesn't she have like a man like <laughs> i was like come on like this is crazy <laughs> also like you have yeah. shannon i mean technically right. like, as a, a very a very serious girlfriend as you said yes yeah she's like i'm married and will's like i have a very serious girlfriend <laughs> yeah. like when i'm pretty sure when that girl left she still had a boyfriend so <laughs> yes how yes can it be? well two boyfriends really <laughs> yeah right shannon's really the one that's like rocking it out right now yes <laughs> so uh, episode 15 opens and one thing that just killed me right away is that kent is laying in the pool on a floaty and he i think he's wearing a yellow speedo was that <laughs> was i the only one that saw that oh my god i missed that it's no i missed the yellow speedo. Suit for sure yeah i mean definitely i don't think it was like speedo like, but it was like you know like like the equivalent of wearing tidy whities like it was very little <laughs> covering and it was yellow and he is laying in the pool on a floaty like drinking a beer i'm just like Kent, you cannot be more gay. Like, this is... Happy Pride. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Second. Yeah, true. Uh, I see why him and Bucky get along so well. Yeah, I know right. I kind of brushed over the noms, but, I mean, we already kind of mentioned that it yeah. was uh, Kent and Will, and I think we all agree this is probably a pretty good strategic move because uh, Nicole and Hardy are able to keep Bunky, as in his own words, as a puppet without, you know, pissing him off or scaring him or anything. Mm -hmm. Um so they're able to just kind of put Will up as a pawn and that ultimately is, ends up being a good strategy. Right. Did you guys think it was funny? I, I was like dying when Hardy moved his toothbrush into his room prior to putting up the nomination. Yeah. He's really like very scarred from, from that whole experience, I think. Yeah. Shannon has such a lasting impact. Mm -hmm. It's big like social commodity because he's like this, these cigarettes mean so much and this toothbrush means so much that I have to use these for bartering and I have to use these for hiding. And it's like, bro, it's like a fire token at that point, which I know I wrote down, but like he's yeah. really using it as like social capital. So uh, Nicole tells Kent, she goes to him and she says, I threw HOH because I didn't want to have to nominate you. I don't know about you guys, but I thought this was like one of the worst things I've seen from Nicole this entire game. Like I thought this was terrible. Did you guys see any upside to it? What did you think? Yeah, I don't really know why she did, like, even if she threw HOH, which I think is, like, a fine strategy, the, like, telling Kent was weird to me, like, I don't really think that that did anything for her, it just made her seem, like, kind of inauthentic and fake to, you know, everybody else, where Hardy's just like, well, if you had to nominate me, then nominate me, or, like, don't do it if you, like, don't want to, it just made her seem like, like, what's the point of throwing it if you're then going to tell people that you threw it? Yeah. I was going to say that one extra person, too, makes it completely different because, like, in the first round, there's, like, seven or so people left, and it goes down to six. Playing in the middle when there's seven people left is, like, clear that, like, you're trying to be, like, a swing boat of some sort, whereas when you go down to six, it's, like, if you're trying to move between two, it's, like, it goes four, two, three, three. You kind of have to pick a side, um, and I agree, like, the inauthenticity kind of comes in the fact that, like, she's talking to Will, she's talking to Hardy. Also, there's Krista that she kind of talks to. You can't also add in Kent. Like, you can't have, you can have a social game with everyone, but you can't have, like, a vote with everyone because you literally only have one vote. And I think that's Nicole's problem is I, I think that she is genuinely attached to every single person. Like she really yeah. cares about all these people. Like she is broken up about uh, how, having to vote out Ken. She tries to like yeah. bargain with Hardy, like, oh, can can me and Bunky vote to keep Ken? And you're the tiebreaker, which doesn't yeah. work well. But yeah, just to say like, 
oh, well, if I had to, if I won HOH, I had to nominate you. Well, obviously, then you don't care about him that much. Like, you don't care about him yes. enough to keep him in the game. Um, and that being said, I think Nicole is far and away just like the most dominant player and has so much power in this house. But I didn't really care yeah. for that particular move. Yeah, definitely not a mistake, but definitely like a low, low point of her social strategic game. Um, so what do you guys think about this luxury competition where they uh, <laughs> where they get blow up dolls, have to decorate them and uh, dress them up much like we are dressed up? <laughs> <laughs> I was sad Chris didn't do this outfit for her blow up doll. Yeah. Right. Um, that was a big disappointment. Uh, but Monica's blow up doll looked pretty fantastic, I will say. I mean, yes. I feel like with all of her wigs and stuff that she has in the house, it really put her at a good advantage where she could like really make them look like her. Um I, I don't know. Just in general, I thought Monica's was definitely the best. Yeah. I liked it when they got the blow-up dolls. Uh, I have a quote from Will saying, oh, it's on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> He's such a dumbass. Also, it's, like, funny. Up. It's, like, funny. And I also think it's, like, it's kind of cute to see, like, luxury cons because it is nice. Like, it's something we lose in Survivor now. I can't really remember if Big Brother 21 had a lot of them, but, like, definitely in Survivor now. It's, like, Travel Council, like, we go back to an immunity challenge and tribal council and she keeps going like on a circle and there's very rarely even a reward challenge. So to see like a whole dedicated episode to a luxury comp is really sweet and kind of endearing for like 2001 pre 9-11 television or like a rap, like, you know what I mean? Like it's just a different like world we're in. It's like kind of cool to go back. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it was, I thought it was interesting like with them getting to pick what they were playing for, where it was like a hundred dollars of whatever. And the fact that so many people chose to spend their $100 on flowers to right. Shannon, Boogie, or their husband, I was very surprised about. Um, but that was that was very sweet, I thought. Yeah. You know, I didn't think it was sweet. I was like, I would be playing <laughs> myself 100%. The only people who played for themselves were uh, Bunky wanted vitamins and <laughs> wanted cigarettes. Like, and everybody else was going to send send something to somebody else. Um, and ultimately the girls win and Krista says, uh, or she tells Boogie to send flowers to Shannon from Will, which I'm like, guys, that was calm down. Iconic. I like- oh my gosh, can we talk about Boogie's, the, fa- the fact that, not Boogie, um, the fact that Bunky for his luxury pick was vitamins and then when he for america's choice for like the addition to the backyard it was new grass dress yes. i'm it's obsessed funny. with that it's so funny grass. what are we doing here yo who are, are you like a dog like an aging dog <laughs> why do you want grass and like a pot really belly really wanted ophelia. Yeah. Ophelia. yeah ophelia also i love that and i like stan ophelia because oh, i'm pretty sure ophelia is a boy like when, yes. right? When Bunky was saying bye, I missed that detail completely. And he was like, I'm really going to miss him. He's so cute. He's such a loving pig. I was like, it's a boy. That's iconic. <laughs> it's Ophelia yeah. the male pig. Uh, while we're on the topic, uh, Pat, as an English major, did you see the irony of Ophelia almost drowning? I do see the irony in it. I did read that play this semester as well. I got an A in the class, and I'm very excited that I could even recognize a Shakespeare uh, a Shakespeare plot. But when Ophelia almost drowned, like, I know, Luke, you don't love animals. I love my own animals, and I'm kind of, like, I, in between Cassie loves animals. Luke doesn't really like that, like, animals as much. I'm in the middle where I love my own animals. But this pig, I'm much like Monica, where she was like, I don't even fuck with animals. I just, <laughs> it's a pig. Like, who would you like? And by the end, the pig's, like, scurrying behind her and, like, sitting with yes. her feeding. Like, when Ophelia almost drowned I thought he first of all I thought he died and I was like oh my god that's why they never did this again or maybe they do but I was so sad because Ophelia is such, such I never thought I would love a pig and I seriously like love this pig and I it's probably dead I assume it's dead now but he's so cute can I do a little side rant for a second of like the funniest prank I ever saw in college yeah. my Wait. one friend basically was like pissed at I forget who. I think it was maybe like her ex-boyfriend or something. I forget. And basically posted a Craigslist ad for like a litter of micro pigs and put his contact information for like who to call if they were interested in the micro pigs. And so this kid just like kept getting phone calls and emails regarding <laughs> the micro pigs that he had that were non-existent. And I was dying. I want to have a lot of hits. Also, there's a whole um, side hustle. Well, there's a whole thing where people, like, micro pigs were trendy a little while back, and there were a bunch of people that were selling full-size, like, regular pigs and advertising them as micro pigs. And so people would adopt them, and then they would grow into, like, 400-pound pigs. Oh, my gosh. God. Scandal. Yeah. And then they'd have to, like, get rid of them because they were, like, too big for the house. Me. So. That's crazy. Yeah. That's that's all I have to say about micro pigs. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for coming in. I forgot about micro pigs, but I do remember the Kardashians episode where Kylie Jenner thinks the pig is a chicken, which is iconic. But 
That's like, I didn't realize, so like, would Ophelia, is that why they got, I mean, they probably got rid of Ophelia because why are they going to keep a pig? First of all, let me take an even further step back. Towards the end of the 19th or 18th episode in this, like in the season, they're talking about how they're halfway done, like with the season, mm-hmm. which I guess makes sense because we started with 12 people, but now we're down to five, right? Yeah, I think they were saying that right. was the halfway point with, like, because of days. Oh, but not, like, rounds. Okay. Because my thought process was, why couldn't Ophelia stay? But I guess, like, if a pig gets fat and, like, that big so fast, like, she could probably gain, he could probably gain, like, 20 or 30 pounds in, like, a month and a half. Yeah. Right? Like, is that the thought? Or maybe they're just, like, we don't want to, like, literally, we are already buying food for these five people. Why buy it for this pig? Well, I yeah. think also maybe a liability, the fact that a pig is just, like, left you have to like count and i mean krista yeah. also was like the primary caretaker for this pig and true. krista left you know true maybe Mom love krista even more. the fact that she was like so obsessed with the pig like so <laughs> the pig came into the shower with her and then like pooped in the shower with her i was just dying i thought it was so cute yeah. i wanted to snuggle ophelia yeah and i think i love the ophelia for... screams also yes <laughs> he's sassy I thought it was fun for a round, but I think the Big Brother, like, this isn't, it's not like an animal show. Like, I don't think, I think they weren't the focus to be on the players. So I think, I don't, and I feel, they may have brought in a dog at some point until later Big Brother season. I don't really remember, but there's definitely never like a season long pet or anything because they don't want, yeah. you know, oh, oh, it's nomination ceremony and like Ophelia screaming. Like, that would be really annoying. <laughs> I think. Um, you know, people have to go take the pig out at certain, you know, at, a, at an awkward time. So I think that's part of the, the reasons. Like, they really wanted to be focused yeah. on the players in the game. Yeah. Right. Is Ophelia was, like, sorry, is she like a meme? Is he a meme like going forward or is it kind of just like people forgot about Ophelia? I mean, I was five when this aired, but like Ophelia is not remembered in the in the Big Brother oh. community. Oh, that's kind of sad. Yeah, you much like sweet, that. much like sweet, nasty, Ophelia is forgotten. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, I like have to, we have to remember them and bring them. Bring them forward. <laughs> Ophelia and sweet, nasty. Sweet, nasty Ophelia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ophelia is nasty because he's a pig. Uh, <laughs> something else I loved in episode 15 was when Monica and Nicole were playing backgammon and they were being way too loud and everybody was trying to sleep and Bunky storms out and has like the first outburst of maybe his entire life. I don't really know, but definitely the big brother house. Um, and he basically like makes himself a big target because he's being super annoying. And uh, Monica says to Bunky, you throw in some stuff out that's real not cute, baby. And I was like, <laughs> Monica. <laughs> I love everything. Everything Monica says, I'm obsessed with. I, I do love Monica. Oh, Monica Cassie. Amazing. I was going to say, Cassie, how do you think fights will fare going forward in the Big Brother house, like in the evolution of the game? Because I've seen a what couple you, seasons. What do, what do you mean? Like, how do I think like fights will happen throughout? The- well, how do you think, like, do you think fights will be common? And do you think fights will have like big lasting impacts on seasons? Because I've seen a couple seasons where they're probably like the most famous fights, probably of all time. And then, like, how that affects the game. So I was curious how you would think it would affect the game going forward. It's tough because I think people can see that, like, when you fight and cause tension, it definitely puts a, a target on you. But like we've talked about before, you're, you're living in this house for three months. You know, you kind of have to, like, sometimes you need to blow up at people. Yeah. Um, do I think it'll have lasting impact? No, I don't. I think people will get over it. Like in future seasons, as things get to be more and more strategic, I could see big fights happening. And then if one of those people gets sent home that round, whatever, but I think past that round, I would imagine that people will get over it because I would imagine things are more strategic. Yeah. Yeah. I always think of it in the realm of, or lens of Survivor too, because I feel like if there's a huge fight in Survivor, the people that it's between usually mm-hmm. one of them will go home and one of them will be kept as like a goat from then on but that's why i was kind of like hmm i wonder where that'll go here i also haven't seen between seasons two and seasons 10 so i'm curious to see the escalation of that from like bunky just losing his shit because they're being loud to like actual moral fights and stuff like that right yeah no i i, I think in general this fight was like I think it's fine. I mean, I don't think this fight will have, like, lasting impact in the game, though, because Bunky, I mean, they were being really loud. They kind yeah. of blown, it blew it over pretty quickly. I don't think it was, like, an assault on somebody's, like, character, which I think would have more of a lasting impact. It was just, like, a roommate kind of scuffle. Right. Oh, yeah, he's back. <laughs> I had to get out of the towel. It was Remember. right. This is my <laughs> Bunky-inspired button down. Okay, I love it. A Bunky down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, but I, I enjoyed that that fight. And uh, Will is really enjoying just, like, the breakdown of the entire Smokers Alliance. I, I just love – it's not like he caused the breakdown of it. Like, basically, it's starting because Shannon and Mike got sent home. 
Um, right. But I just like love Will's commentary on it. He's his, his glee in the diary room is fantastic. Right. I, it is so. One of my favorite quotes was, "I throw out about 100 to 150 lies per day, and a few of them stick." Yeah. I can't. He's very. It's honestly very Sandra esque, like a Sandra of. I don't know if those Pearl Islands are more so heroes versus villains, where she just throws out a bunch of lies and see where they stick. Definitely happened in Game Changers a lot, too. Um, I'm very confident in my winner's pick going forward. I really was like, Will, Dr. Will, he has this, just because of, like, I guess the awe of the uh, aura of him. But I'm kind of glad I stuck with it last episode, too, because, like, last episode or last sets of episode that we talked, like, podcasted about. I really thought that he was going home like this round or the next round, like one of these two rounds. I was like, there's no fucking way. Like if Boogie got voted out that early and he's a huge character going forward, that means they came back and were big, but no, like I'm like, I'm a proud of Will. He obviously either won or didn't win based on what he did. But like, definitely I've, you know, I saw why someone would dislike him and now I'm back to being like, okay, like I, I feel comfortable liking Will. I'm glad he wasn't like that much of a dick the whole season. Well, I'm curious. Who do you think, who do you think Will can beat in the end, Pat? I initially said Nicole because I thought she was a GOAT. That first round, uh, that first, not set, but first round of voting, definitely saw Nicole as a GOAT. Um, I don't know, though. I don't know now. I don't think that that's the case anymore. And going forward, like, if I had to guess, I guess, like, I fuck with Monica. But, like, does the jury like Monica? You know what I mean? Like, eventually Krista, well, Krista's on the jury now, but eventually Krista... If Will wins and has to win against Monica, that means Bunky, that means who also means Kent, and uh, all these people we see now, Nicole, um, all those people, and Hardy would have to be on the jury and would have to award for the, I would assume, the best game. So for me, I like Monica's social game, and I think she can make some good strategic moves because she has proven that she can get some alliances. Um, But will the jury think that? That's what I don't know. Um, I initially said Nicole, but I guess I would say Nicole might go out this next round. And maybe I would say I would say like big threats are Nicole, Bunky. I think Will's a huge threat, but I'm watching from the outside. Um, I would say Nicole and Bunky are huge threats. Um, Bunky's not good strategically, as we saw like this that last round, but he's a he's a ridiculous character. And I think like someone like Richard Hatch won in 2000. So I don't see why another gay man couldn't win in 2001. So I don't think that'll deter from that at all either. And I think, I think, um, I think Hardy and Kent would really push for him to be like, yo, Bunky is mad funny. He was a great character, great sport, and he could win. So I feel like it'd have to be Monica, right? Like, I don't know. Right. I mean, for me, I think like it comes to, I don't know what these big brother juries are like, you know, I mean, I guess this is the, and that Big Brother has even had a jury since Big Brother won was America's choice. Right. Um, you know, because on one hand, I think I think Will is right now, Will and Nicole are playing the two best strategic games. Yeah. I think Will's yeah. probably showing her cards a little bit too much, and I, I think it's going to bite her in the butt later. Mm-hmm. But um, I think those two are playing the best strategic games. But there are a lot of people that are like, I'm not willing to, like, sell my soul for, like, some money. And I kind of could see, like, people not really responding well to Will being like, yeah, I lied a bunch. And a lot of times it worked out for me. True. Um, You know, but I also think there is, like, some implicit bias in both, like, if Bunky or Monica make it to the finals because you have a black woman or you have, like, a gay man, you know, in the early 2000s. And as we see today, I mean, like, racial bias is still, like, a big problem, you know. So Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's really tough to say. I... I, at this point, I think if, like, the jury is not super bitter and, like, appreciates game, I think Will could beat pretty much anyone. Yeah. Um, but yeah. unfortunately and unfortunately, I don't know if this jury is going to reward that kind of gameplay, like, quite this early. Like, I think maybe Will is playing a little bit before his time. That's true. Know? Well, I'm curious, Cassie, from your point of view, not having seen any more seasons, who do you think is playing the best game overall? Who do you think should win? Who do you think will win? Um, like I said, I think right now Will is playing the best game, which like makes me want to cry to say that. But yeah. um, yeah, I think Will's playing the best game. I don't think Will's gonna win though. I think like Will will definitely come back for like an All Star season, as I know like yeah. there is an All Star season that that happens. I think he'll come back, and I I bet maybe he'll do better because I think the gameplay will be respected more. Yeah. I think out of the people left, um, for me, I think like Monica or. Bunky have a decent chance, but it's just, 
it's so hard to say. I think like the Hardy and Nicole duo is going to get split up unless they just start winning like HOH yeah. competitions, which isn't out of the question because we've seen Nicole be really close in a couple of them. And as per Nicole, she's like thrown, you know, one of them. Right. I think it, she, she said that she had thrown all of them, I think, right. up until the one she wins. Right. So, yeah. I think if Nicole played her, Nicole's I've only like seen, very like she's gotten to know you can tell. I've only seen 10, 11, 12, and in the most recent season, I think if Nicole played in Big Brother 21, she would do better than she's even doing now because I feel like her game is to, I mean, maybe she would get blown up a little bit, but she's throwing competitions, which I think is always good in Survivor or Big Brother or Sequester. You should not be like showing yourself as a threat or else you'll get dragged in Sequester or you'll get targeted in Survivor. Or as we see here, you'll get labeled as like that hardy kind of kingpin. Um, but I think right mm -hmm. now we're, we're a little bit before that. Um, whereas Hardy has already won two competitions. I could see him feasibly winning a third, which is like crazy. And then we have Nicole who's like, oh, she hasn't even tried yet. So for me, it's like, I could even, I, you know, I could see Nicole beating like a Monica or someone who's played a very laid back game. But I agree, yeah. like, yeah. I, my initial final two was Nicole and Dr. Will only because I thought Nicole would be a goat he would want to drag there. But now that I'm seeing this like secret kind of friendship they have, I would, I guess I'd buckle down and say they're the final two, but that he, it's more of like a friend type thing. He's like, oh, this person and I had a secret alliance and I, maybe Will's like, I orchestrated that or Nicole's like, I brought this together and then whoever argues that better wins out of the two of them. Right. If I was to rank like who I think is playing the best, like I think Nicole is playing the best game period. Like, yes. I, and, I, and that's partly because I think Will started playing well recently, whereas yes. Nicole has played well from the beginning. Um, but I do think Will is the second best player and then Hardy would be third. And then I kind of just think Monica and Bunky aren't really playing very strategically. I think they're, they're both pretty emotional people. Yeah. Um, and so I would kind of just say they're kind of equal at the bottom, but in very different ways. Whereas, you know, Bunky is crying all the time. And I kind of feel yeah. like he wouldn't be respected because he's literally telling people that he's a puppet. Um, yeah. And I think Monica, it's hit or miss because I think she is really passionate. I think people could respect that. I just don't know if her game, like st strategic game is very good. Yeah. And I guess I'll save like who I want to return for like next, like the next episode, because obviously we'll see who wins and we'll see how it all pans out. But I've really enjoyed Monica. Monica was very under the radar. She's not out yet and she could very easily win. I just think she played such an under the radar game. She's so funny and really like endearing. Same thing with um, Bunky because Bunky like has shown America at this point, like, and so has Richard Hatch, but they've both shown America. Like it's okay to be gay and you can definitely win a reality season. Um, at least Richard has proven that. So I don't know. It's for me, there's no one left that can't win because there's someone that someone else can sit next to and beat. Like, I think the yeah. most even final twos right now are Nicole and Will. And then depending on who argues if they win. And then we have like, I would say like Monica versus Bunky, I guess would be pretty even though. I think Kent would like really gun for making sure uh, Bunky got a lot of votes. Um, yeah, while we're on the topic of Monica, we have a, a massive blow up at the end of this episode. Speaking of fights, we just talked about one. Mm -hmm. um, this was a little bit hard to follow, but basically Kent and Bunky just feel like they've been mistreated all week. And I feel like this was kind of the culmination of all of their feelings of being on the bottom. And basically they say, like, Kent says, you didn't say good morning to Bunky, to Monica. And Monica flips her shit. She is like yelling at the top of her lungs. Like, just I don't take more of you. Now. And um, <laughs> I, it, it was wild. Uh, what did you guys think of this uh, iconic fight? Oh, man. So I mean, I have so many things to say. Like, the way that Kent even initiated it, where he wasn't just like, so I've been feeling like people, that, you know, like, aren't, like, I feel like that would have been the way to go about it, being like, I feel like because I'm, like, on the block or whatever, people aren't, like, wanting to even interact with me, and it's just making it unpleasant around the house. He just was like, <laughs> You didn't say good morning to Bunky. <laughs> like, how could you do that to yeah. Bunky? <laughs> so I feel like he kind of like almost threw Bunky under the bus there. We're like, yeah, for sure. Does it now make it seem like Bunky is like whining in the corner because Monica didn't say good morning to him? Like, I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but it, it was quite funny because Monica just like completely blew up, um, and I appreciated it. It's just so hard too because like, especially like in this scenario, it's just like 
Monica literally was just like, I, like probably just having a bad morning or just like a decent to bad morning. And then like, it's completely flipped on her. It completely makes a funky look bad. And in the end can't go so home anyway. So it's like, you really just blew these two people up. Luckily you didn't blow their entire games up, but you started to fight for no reason. I empathize with Monica though. I would be like, well, who the fuck are you? I'd be like, don't talk to me like that. <laughs> like, yeah. I, it's a New York thing, I guess. But I would seriously just be like, I just don't understand how you could be saying I'm an awful person for not saying good morning to someone. I'm fighting for $500,000. Like, yeah. what do you mean? And I think Monica would have reacted better if she hasn't been in the Big Brother house for like 40 some days. Like, I think it was probably everybody was feeling a lot of pressure. Like, t- tensions were just high, period, with everybody, not just with Ken and Bunky. So I think Monica responding like that was way over the top and probably understandable considering the circumstances of the game. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Well, I also think it's probably a little bit of a cultural thing, too. I mean, Monica's from Brooklyn. Kent is from, yeah. what, like, North Carolina, South Carolina? Tennessee. I don't know. He's, right. He's from the South somewhere and where I feel like there's more of these, like, pleasantries. Like, hello, how are you? Like, I remember when I first right. moved to Philly, I was like, people don't like to say hello when you're passing them on yeah. the street and that like threw me off. But then now I feel like yeah. I have like a little of that inside of me. We're now walking around here when everybody's just like, hello, how's it going? And you're like, like, I don't know you. <laughs> don't talk um, to me. <laughs> so part of that too is like, that's probably like, you know, more of the norm where people are like, say these pleasantries in the morning, even if they're not feeling it versus Monica's like, I'm not having a good morning. So I'm not going to say good morning to you. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I stand Monica. So like it, it it's hard for me to say anything bad about her but yeah it, it was over the top of a reaction but it seems like that's kind of Monica's MO based on like the things that her sister was saying in the you know interview with her sister that she just like occasionally blows up and then she goes back to normal with no problems yeah so we have yet another fight in this episode and the Monday meeting. I thought this was probably the best Monday meeting yet. Usually these are pretty dull. Um, but Kent really makes a play here. And this is one of the reasons that I'm really impressed with Kent as a player is he, like, didn't give up like a lot of players have done in past weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, he basically tries to make a play to reunite Top and evict Will. So he says Nicole, Bunky, Monica, and him should vote out Will. And then the next week they should target Hardy because – Hardy is playing to get two other people to the top. And if you're not one of those two people, like you shouldn't be in an alliance with him, basically. Yeah. He laid it out and he, he was spitting facts because honestly, like, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing, like, first of all, incorrect he was saying. He wasn't spreading lies. And he also wasn't saying anything that was untrue. And we know that as, like, we we're watching 20 years later and even before, beyond that, we're viewers. But still, like, it, even if he's telling, like, one lie out of ten out of that sentence, a majority of what he's saying should make some something click in your head if you're not one of those people that's in top or not one of those people that's um, outside, like, in the alliance. Like, you should be like, oh, wait, you're right. Let's vote Will out. Also, until this episode, Will is, like, the biggest threat of the season. And it was kind of, like, because of Chilltown. But now that Chilltown's gone, you're saying that Will's threat isn't there. But clearly that's not true because even in this week, we're seeing, like, Will can play a social game to the point where, I mean, yes, like, like um Kent blows up but Will should have been way more of a target than he was and he was able to get out of that somehow yeah I think the most effective thing that Kent said which will ultimately you know kind of trigger something in Will's mind is like who is Hardy's number two and it's funny because Kent really is like thinks that he can get Nicole on his side so obviously Nicole and Hardy are hiding the extent of the relationship because like we know as viewers Nicole is not turning on Hardy for anything Mm -hmm. um right but yeah, Ken was in a tough spot because Krista hates him. Uh, Nicole's going to, you know, go with Hardy's wishes. Um, you know, Monica probably is closer to Krista. So she's going to vote against Kent, too. They just had a big blow up. So he's really, there's hardly anybody who is going to want to keep him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And ultimately, he doesn't even get a single sympathy vote, much to uh, Nicole's <laughs> extreme sadness. <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> Everything, everything screams gay culture with this man. I can't <laughs> rest in peace to a true yeah. gay icon. And I really feel like Nicole was the only one who would call him daddy. Nobody else calls him that. <laughs> but always in the diary, Nicole would be like, so Kent, a.k.a. daddy. And then she would just like continue on. It's like, do you have to say that every single time? Right. Or she would just be like, yeah, I have to vote daddy this week. <laughs> yes. Like, that's the reg. Also, like, yeah. wow. Oh, his nickname being Daddy. Like, why would you want that? It's just yeah, so... She would say that to him, like, all the time around the house where she's like, well, you know, Daddy, I just have to do this. And I'm just like, oh. So we have, I feel like we have a lot of strategy going on in these episodes. Like, right off the bat in the next episode, Will's, you know, his his mind is turning. 
And basically, Krista confirms to him that she has an alliance with with Hardy and Monica, and that they're called the Untouchables. Mm -hmm. And immediately, Will goes and tells Nicole. Like, <laughs> that, I love the, the editing of that. Is like one second he's sitting there with Krista, hearing it, and then like the very next second he's with like Nicole in the hammock, just spilling everything and like even yes. exaggerating what he heard. Right. Um, but I loved that play from Will. Yeah, I mean that was that was the kind of thing that makes me think like Will is a great player. I mean he knew that the information that he had gotten from Krista was lethal information, and he went and used that. Um, to his advantage. Yeah. And this is one like, of the things that I think is Krista's downfall is that she, I feel like she's kind of a cocky player. Like she's very proud of how deceptive she is um, and very proud mm -hmm. of like how manipulative she's being. And like, she wants to go on and like tell you like, oh, like I'm actually playing really, really well. Like I have a secret alliance that I've had since day three. And so I'm going right. to tell you about it. <laughs> and I'm like, Krista, what are you doing? Right. I'm you don't big, want like, to be telling Will extra stuff. Right. Which is not what you want. Anything extra is, like, too much. And I, I'm a big believer in, like, show, don't tell me. Especially when it comes to, like, a game. Like, it, you shouldn't, like, no one should be confused about where your standing is. But at the same time, you should be sitting at final tribal or final, like, jury speeches for Big Brother. And then you break it down to them. X, Y, Z, here's all the things that happen. Instead of you telling me I'm a huge player because I have untouchables. I have top. I have chill town. No, no, no. You tell the jury that when you're sitting there and it's good for confessionals but it's also like it's yeah. weirdly formatted we, we we see and people back then could see if they had the live streams too we see what you're doing and you are a big character but you're not really the biggest like strategic threat as of right then um but it was a great play i think for will because obviously that's not a good alliance for him like he's not in a good spot with monica and hardy so he immediately goes to nicole and we see him working a lot on trying to separate nicole and hardy um, which doesn't really work, but I think you can't blame him for trying because it doesn't seem like anybody knows the extent of, of how much they're aligned. Um, but yeah, Nicole, you know, it goes from Krista to Will, Will to Nicole, and then Nicole immediately tells Hardy. <laughs> so most of the house knows about it within probably what's seemingly on the show, just a few hours, maybe. So. Right. And something else that comes from that is Krista basically implies that Will should be trying to get out Hardy. That's going to be what's best for Will's game is to get out Hardy. Uh, which is ultimately also going to get back to Hardy, and I think plays a big role in why Chris is evicted. Oh, I was just going to say, she lost the trust of Hardy and Nicole, who, as we've seen, are huge powerhouse players right now, um, or like a power couple almost. Um, and you just, you like don't want to cross them at this point, unless you're HOH and you can put both of them up. Like, it's not a good idea to cross them while they both can, you know, make some real moves and cause some damage in the house. Um, so we get a video from Lindsay, which is Hardy's girlfriend. And I just feel like all of these house guests, I thought they were all single coming into the show and just like out of nowhere, like boyfriends and girlfriends are just spiking up all over the place. <laughs> uh, were you guys Absolutely. surprised? Definitely. I don't like I, think... I wasn't. I, yeah. I feel like because Hardy is like, like he's like a uh, stereotypical, like a hunky guy, you know? Hunky and bunky. Yeah, hunky bunky, hunky Hardy. Um, but I feel like the fact that Hardy didn't have any, like, relationships kind of going in the house and the fact that he was, like, so close with Nicole, I don't know. I was like, why is he not having, like, relationships in the house? Not that you, like, have to, but I don't know. You're stuck in a house with people for three months. Like, it's bound to happen, I guess, if if you want it to. Um, yeah. It's also very – I mean, I, I was surprised and I wasn't, but Hardy's girlfriend was very pretty. So pretty. For sure. Yeah, like, I did feel bad for her because she said, like, she was uncomfortable with, like, the Krista flirting. And obviously it's not nearly as bad as freaking Jim and Shannon. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it would be hard. <laughs> oh. All right, Pete, yeah. yeah, All right, Pete. Lindsay should get together after this. Yeah, honestly, fuck it. <laughs> they, could, they could just become, like, a thruple. Which? Shannon, Jim, and Will. Honestly, I'm cool. But it's also, I like. I think they would do it. I feel, like, I feel like Will and Shannon would be down. I don't know if Jim would, but... Yeah, Jim seems kind of like a wet blanket, but maybe he'll be a part of it. <laughs> a wet blanket that's also very into his appearance. Into his appearance? Shannon or... has a type. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah. Period. <laughs> if they don't brush their eyebrows with a toothbrush, I'm not interested. <laughs> For sure. Uh... Um, we get a great segment of, like, Will and Ken's trajectories of the game so far, of, like... Ken had a rough first week, and after that, he was super loved, and now he's super hated again. Whereas, like, Will was always hated, and now he's like, everybody loves him. So I like that uh, compare and contrast of, like, Will and Ken's journeys through the game so far. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Nicole says that Will might be her only ally in the game, maybe the only person that she can trust, which is just so ironic considering the history. And that he's of the never lied to her. <laughs> yes, no, he's never which, lied to her for sure. It is crazy though. Like I know she definitely laid it out in confessional, but it's also cool to see like their character progression. And I would like to see them both come back for a different season or at the same season, just because Nicole seriously hated him, and she said that verbatim. She's like, I hated this guy's guts week one, and now they're here and they're able to like. Not necessarily be a secret alliance, but they definitely had some secret meetings for the most part. Um, that I feel like they could really like run this shit going forward. Like they definitely had a twosome with like connections to both sides with no real allegiance to anyone else besides themselves. It's pretty big. Yeah. Uh, when Nicole votes this week for Kent to go home, she says, Will and I are the same person except I have compassion, ethics, and morals. And I love that <laughs> quote. <laughs> yes. There was that contrasting with Will's quote of we have nothing in common except the attraction to me. <laughs> yeah. From yes. Quotes, which I thought was like such a funny compare and contrast that For we sure. got throughout. I mean, it didn't happen back to back, but that we got back to back, like that we got yeah. in this yes. episode. So, mm-hmm. sorry. Can't talk today. I mean, because I actually think they're actually, they have no similarities. They are, they have no, the personalities are night and day from each other in my nope. opinion. I mean, are somewhat, no, I mean, never mind. Will, I was going to say they're both somewhat straightforward, but Will is straightforward in ways that are, like, not truthful. Right. So it doesn't really count. <laughs> that... But they are both very strategic players. That's, I think that that's their only similarity. Yeah. That was something I wanted to bring up, but since we're kind of rolling into the second round anyway, one thing that I found interesting was when Monica was at the table talking to people and people were like Hardy specifically were saying like, oh, she's speaking in riddles and that's why we can't trust her. And I remember going back and watching it before. Like, I was like, wait, what do you mean? Like, I thought it was pretty straightforward to me. She was very straightforward. And like, people were like, oh, she's talking in riddles. She's talking in all this language. I was like, dude, I feel like she's talking in the most proper English and straightforward being like, don't vote me out because this bitch has so many alliances. And yeah, I'm close to her. But like, who else am I close to? I was like, that is literally basically what she said. It's not like she's like, oh, like those snakes and rats from Survivor or like, oh, this person. Like, No, she was literally just like, she has a lot of alliances. I'm here. I thought that was crazy. And I don't know if that's, again, just a cultural thing. But yeah. I seriously, I was just like, why why don't why aren't you listening like kind of open your ears type thing whereas someone like someone like nicole is very straightforward and someone like will is genuinely speaking in riddles all the time he's like yeah like he's like i mean yeah he's like he says blatant things like yeah i'm a sociopath and yeah i don't like animals but i think he's just trying to lie to the camera which is again inherently another game he's playing will likes animals though he said numerous times the camera in the diary room and elsewhere that he, uh, he's the biggest, perhaps the biggest animal lover in the house yes. over somebody like Nicole, who literally only uses things that like are not tested on animals, doesn't eat animals. Like clearly Nicole is the biggest animal fan in the house, yeah. but Will in all of his cockiness and arrogance thinks that he's the biggest animal lover. The whole it's thing, weird. because he was the savior for Ophelia when Ophelia dropped to the bottom of the pool. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Anybody would have done that. The pool is like four feet deep. It's not that challenging. Yeah, it's not I mean, that deep either. Nicole won't even drink anything squeezed from a cow's nipple. So I feel like uh, <laughs> she wins. Right. If you won't drink something squeezed from a cow's nipple, that's that's how you know. <laughs> oh, but I loved uh, when Julie was asking questions to people, like Will suddenly breaks into uh, I Will Survive. And then yeah. gets, like, everybody else <laughs> to also join in. I'm like, this is, like, this is what Will Kirby is. It's, like, he just does ridiculous things and gets everybody else, like, join him in doing it. It reminded me of, like, the fast that was yes. attempted in, like, week one or two. Like, he just, like, wants to make a ridiculous spectacle of everything. Yeah. And, and see who will follow him along for the journey. And a lot of people yeah. usually do. <laughs> I mean, as what Will said later on, I don't think we've hit it yet, where he was, like, Money is easy enough to come by. I'm in this for the fame. Yeah. <laughs> that would so be you're transparent about it, Will. <laughs> yeah. I feel like as it's going on, like, I don't like to say that I empathize with him, but I feel like as a player, I would be Dr. Will. Like, I would try to emulate that because I would just be trying to have fun with it. Like, me and Luke always talk, like, text about this when we talk about, like, applying for reality shows. Like, I'm like, Luke's like, I want to win. And I'm like, if I come away with a couple of friends that I'm lifelong friends with, I'm kind of okay with that. Like, that's kind of cute. Like, I, I, get to go, I get to go on Survivor, like, go camping for, like, 39 days. And then, like, if I lose in Final Tribal, at least I have, like, best friends. <laughs> like... <laughs> It looks like I will murder. Yeah, I'm like, I will do whatever it takes. Yeah. To be I'll, I'll, I'll like, buy some new friends. Yeah. <laughs> or like, if they're really my friends, they'll still love me at the end. 
True. That's also true. I guess I'm just, I'm competitive, but I guess like latent competitive where it's like, I'm like, you wouldn't really know, but I'm kind of just like, whatever. I, I don't know. I live by that because this dude literally was like, yeah, I just want to be famous, which I wouldn't agree with, but I think it's iconic that he's like, yeah, I just want fame. <laughs> Not money. Well, Kent, when he, Kent got voted out, I mean, plot twist, Kent gets voted out. And then when he gets voted out, he was like, you just got a bunch of freaks in here. Like nine out of the 12 of them already had agents. Yeah, Normal yes. people don't do that. <laughs> Yes, and that's, Luke mentioned that before, but I guess that's kind of where we're heading, where he's like, it's like his, like, I don't want to say his diary, but like his exit confessional, basically, like his exit interview with Julie Chen. I'm seriously, I was sitting there in shock. I felt like I was like bamboozled because I really was like, oh my God, Kent learned and like, he's grown so much. And then Julie was like, so how do you feel about like homosexual people now? Which first of all, I was like, oh, so we're monsters. Okay, great. The way you labeled it was crazy. Right. But also, I guess it's 2001, so I don't blame Julie at all. But she said that. And then Kent is right. basically just like, oh, they're they're disgusting. I, I, you know, Bunky has, you know, changed my mind as like a personal way. But like, still, I still think that. Right. They're... I don't want that kind of thing in my household. AKA implying that like he would have Bunky. Because that was after he was asked if he Bunky over for dinner. He was like, yeah, I'd have Bunky over for dinner, but that hasn't changed my mind about wanting that within my household. Basically implying yeah. that he would, like, allow like, Greg to come. Like, am right. I the only one that wants to desperately meet Greg? I'm curious. What? Like, is he equally as hairy? Like, I I don't know. <laughs> I have I so can't. many questions. I can't. <laughs> but I, like, love Bunky. I want to know who his, like, partner is, you know? I can't wait. I hope he doesn't return ever, like, in Big Brother, so we can Google him immediately after the season, because I want to know everything about him. All these people, anyone that doesn't return, I guess that's kind of spoiling it, but I really want to follow, like, the people who don't return, but I guess that would spoil other seasons, but I really want to see Bunky. Right. right, I mean, that's what's tough with this whole experience, is, like, generally, you know, if you're up to date with everything, you can Google people, and I mean, this was, you know, 20 years in the past, like, a lot of stuff has happened, even, like, you guys, Luke showed us pictures of what Dr. Will looks like these oh days. God. And I was like, I wouldn't have even recognized him. Like, I, I don't know that man. Um, yeah. So it'd be interesting to do that with all of these players. But unfortunately, we have to, like, be pretty selective about it and maybe go through Will, like, or not Will, sorry, Luke. Like, it's lucky that we have you where you have all the spoilers and you can filter things for us yeah. and give us little tidbits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, honestly... There's maybe, like, two or three of these people that are active in the Big Brother community, and the rest of them have fallen off the face of the earth. So, like, most of these people you can Google, and you're not going to find out anything. You know, after after you after they've been evicted, you're not going to find out anything. Three's a lot. Like, I guess I knew Boogie and Will, but I'm so curious who the third person is. <laughs> Honestly, those are the two I was thinking of. I just said three to cover my bases in case I'm forgetting somebody. <laughs> I'm curious. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But those, right. I mean, those are the two that, like, actually, I guess... Are, are still like talked about a lot yeah mm -hmm. for sure but yeah something else interesting in kent's um eviction interview is the banner planes that are flying around apparently there's just like tons of banner planes he says that he had six that were supporting him and i'm like how wow. many banner planes are flying over the damn house if you had six that supported just you right like, like, how many, popular how many house they already had Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would send a plane well, party. One that said, uh, "Hardy is a lying, two-faced snake in the grass." <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Thank yeah, you. I mean that is not good for Hardy's game. But I just imagine like there must be so many ludicrous banners flying around. Like I don't think anybody takes them that seriously anymore because, I mean, I'm sure there's things about everybody. I know there was one about Krista earlier in the season. Um, I know there's more coming up later in the game, on the right. show because right. Kent kind of alludes to that. Um, but yeah, that does obviously get that gets stopped in later seasons because you can't have the outside world influencing uh, what's happening in the game. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, we go into uh, Nicole after she had been throwing every HOH. She wins this competition where they have to uh, slide keys down a uh, little chute. It was cute. I get what you're <laughs> saying about the low budget um, challenges. Yes. Yes. I'm just gonna say that. Yeah. Even just with blow up dolls and like retrieving the blow up dolls. And that was, like, like all of the challenges in the last couple episodes have been like pretty low, low budget. I'd say like even going to the food item thing of this week where it was literally just a inflatable kiddie pool of cereal <laughs> with like magnetic letters. And that's <laughs> honestly, that was the most impressive comp set up to date. Like there was like a giant milk <laughs> carton and a giant bowl, a giant spoon. Like I'm like, where did they even get this stuff? Because up until now they were, you know, having a bowl float across the pool that you would throw CDs in, like, yes. <laughs> or way more high-tech than that. 
<laughs> like that needs that. to be. We need to add that to our notes as we need to like rank the most atrocious challenges mm-hmm. of the season and like the lowest budget ones of the season I'll once go. we're all done. Cassie, I wish I. Like, I'm going to have to send you a picture of, like, what Big Brother comps yes. are like now, because awesome. you would lose your shit. Like, like, crazy. Like, that's why they, before the season, I was like, Boogie's going to win everything. Will's going to win everything. Because they're not always right. physical. He like, looks always, strong. No, they're grandiose. Oh, like, you wouldn't believe. They close off the outside, and then they reopen the outside, and it's like a wonderland of whatever theme they chose. Like, I'm not trying to spoil it in any way, but there's no way to describe it to you. You'll just see it, and, like, you'll notice. I'm sure I'll notice, too, when we get to a season that the budget gets noticeably upped, because you'll be like, holy shit, like, what, this is, like, they were throwing CDs in the pool a week ago, <laughs> and now they're, like, on top of, like, a 20-foot hole. Like, it's crazy. Even this challenge that uh nicole ends up winning i always think it reminds me of future challenges which i won't spoil but yeah. even they'll keep the concepts of the game theory still in there but they'll have like that but it'll be like a hockey theme and it'll be like a yeah. huge yeah it's like things like that oh, well, one even more ridiculous yeah. things like there was one where everybody was dressed up in like a cat costume and they had like different stations like they had yeah. to go like get in a bowl of milk and like go to like the litter box and like go <laughs> scratch something. I mean, it was ridiculous. There was one where they were holding on to like a unicorn's butt and like stuff would like spray at them out of the unicorn. I mean, yeah. like ridiculous, like that. stupid thing. Like oh. Big Brother is an embarrassing show to go on nowadays. Not that Big Brother 2 wasn't embarrassing in its own way, but like they are going to humiliate you for $500,000. Yeah. 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 But um, yeah, we see Nicole in HOH and she says, I cannot keep track of how many people I'm running a game on. Like she has a relationship with everybody in the house. Right. Uh, and a, a seemingly really close relationship with Krista who ends up getting evicted this week. So that just shows you like Nicole has everybody. <coughs> and it's really totally. Nicole cutthroat. Nicole does what is needed to do. Like what, really... what is needed to be done. Sorry. I'm really excited to see where Nicole goes. Because as much as like I wanted Will to win, that was my winner pick, I would love to be wrong and have Nicole win. Because I feel like her progression has been so seriously, like very exponential. And I, to, to know that she's been throwing competitions and not just outright losing them is dope. Right. I mean, if this was Survivor and we had like an edric to read into, I feel like I would really be like, Nicole is looking really strong at this point, but obviously, like, Big Brother doesn't know who wins, so we can't really read into that very much, which is a new experience for me. So we are at, uh, we have six people gone and six people left. Obviously, Justin threw off the count a little bit, and that's why, like, we have, you know, so few people left with a lot of days. Um, But, yeah, I I know we already kind of mentioned this before, but just what were your expectations of Big Brother 2 coming in versus the reality of the first half of the season? I think there's been less household drama, honestly, than I expected there to be. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think throwing 12 strangers from 12 very different backgrounds in a house to live together and not have any outside contact, um, I expected it to be, not that it isn't hard on the house guests, but I expected it to be more explosive in some ways um, than it has been, which mm-hmm. I guess props to the house guests for being adults and being able to handle their shit well. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'd say the challenges have actually been better than expected. I was expecting like decorate, wow. like I was expecting like decorate this fifty cent poster board and like the best one, <laughs> like just I don't know things that were like lower budget than this, which is already low enough budget. Um, so I'd say that's a thing. Um, I also just in general rule wise was not expecting like obviously in Survivor you can go on an immunity run and you can win like four times in a row and be safe even if you're you know, a big target, but here you're like, you can't really do that because of um, like the head of household not being able to win two weeks in a row. Right. Um, so I think that that's been the biggest surprise for me, just gameplay wise that I wasn't really expecting. Um, and then like we talked about earlier, I'm just in general surprised at how much strategy has gone, to, gone into it. I mean, if we are actually halfway through, you know, like strategy has played a bigger role than I thought it would. I thought it would be more like yeah. this person's bothering me. How's I'm going to get them out? I agree with that point, especially because I really thought not I don't you know, not that I wouldn't give credit to these people because they're fully adults and they're even older than we are and playing games like this, which is so funny to think about. Like a lot of them are just like 30 or 40 and just like doing this, which I would still do if I was that old, obviously, because it's not old at all. But I found that to be interesting as well, because I'm just like, oh, they're really going for it and really just making that strategic point tick when like we've mentioned it multiple times. The only season they've really seen of Survivor is Borneo and Australian Outback, which I guess the Outback has more strategy, but 
Borneo sincerely was just like Richard Hatch creating alliances. And now we're seeing a, a, a phrase that's very popular in Sequester and Big Brother, the floater, is brought up in season two of Big Brother. And it's really the first season of strategic Big Brother where you can actually influence your own game. And I guess the one thing for me is, and I'm not spoiling in any way, but seeing where the game is now both socially and strategically, and some of the social clashes that happen in 2019, because 2020 has not a season yet, um, and seeing none of that happened so far in this season is great. And then also, like, having um, some of these other things that I know occur, especially in the middle of Big Brother's run, they introduce, like, twists that I'm like, oh, okay, like, there's, like, we'll talk about them when we get there, that I'm like, oh, that's interesting, I wonder where that got its origin. But even there's game mechanics, like you mentioned, that aren't a part of this game yet, that really influenced the game. So I'm excited to see when that comes up. And once that pops up, I'll be like, oh shit, here we go. Like that, that'll add a whole other layer to it. Um, I really like going back to the beginning because like Survivor, like I haven't seen the beginning of Survivor since I probably watched it, but I know all about it. Whereas with this, I haven't seen any of this. So it's so new and so fun. Um, and I'm just so excited to see who wins because it'll feel like no matter who, it, I feel like all these people are iconic who are left. Right. Yeah. Well, going back to Nicole's HOH week, uh, how do you think that, obviously, Monica and Krista are going to end up being nominated? Do you think that they kind of dug their own graves? Do you think they were screwed going into this week? Like, there was a lot of drama, obviously, that happened leading up to their nomination. So how do you think Monica and Krista played it? I was disappointed in Krista's gameplay. I understand her motivations, but I think she could have avoided being voted out this week. You know, like, if she had told Nicole she was really willing to vote Monica out, then perhaps she wouldn't have even been nominated and she would still be here to see another day. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but I think Krista was, you know, and in the end more focused on her personal relationships than she was in winning the money. And I don't know if part of it was like so many people were like, I just want you to win. Like, I don't care if I win. I just want you to win. And I don't know. I mean, like Krista strikes me as a person who would basically be like, I'm not like your charity case. If I win, I win. If I don't, I don't. Like, I'm fine. I don't need your charity. Um, and so I can't help but think that that maybe played a role in in things where perhaps people were thinking that they were, you know, playing a good strategic game, playing, being like, I'm not playing for me. I'm playing for Krista because Krista needs it. She has an 11-year-old at home, you know, like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I think Krista could have avoided it if she really, really wanted to, but I don't think she was, like, willing to do what it took in order to stay around, which is yeah, fine. She, but yeah. She didn't want to throw any of her morals out, which is a very noble cause. But I agree. Like, if you're playing a game for zero dollars, like, I agree with her move. But you're playing a game for $500,000, which, like, after taxes is, like, it's still a, a really good chunk of money that could seriously set you up and set you up for the foundations of what you need for the rest of your life, including any of your family members, too. So it's not like you're winning $2 million like a Winners at War, but you're still winning a, ch- a huge chunk of money. Um and so I get why you would want to be like, Monica, you know, Monica should have this and all that. And it is it is really noble. But I guess I take like a Luke, like a Luke ish type stance where I'm like, dude, you got to do what you got to do to win this game. And it's not like she's playing an org. It's not like she's playing even a live reality game. She's playing Big Brother and it's a strategic game. And I can't help but wonder, like, you know, who have, who of these people have seen Survivor? Who of these people just saw Colby say, hey, yeah, let's me and Tina, let's go to the end. And Tina beats Colby when Colby easily could have beat the third place finisher of Australia and Outback. So I'm curious if they're like, oh, let me take the noble route like that. Um, and let's see where it goes from there. It, again, it's a nice moral decision, but it, she she really cost herself the game by not campaigning for herself. Yeah. And Monica, too. Uh, you know, Nicole basically says, like, who would you put up? And Monica says, I would put you up if I won HOH. And it's like, even if it's a lie, like, you got to try. Because you know if you say that you would put up Nicole, why would Nicole not put you up in return? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, but I, and I think Krista also, kind of going back to, like, the charity case thing, got a little bit too comfortable and thought that she could call shots that she was no longer in control of calling. Like she really thought that Hardy and Nicole were going to take her to the top because they were going to originally until they started deciding they had to play for themselves. But also I kind of feel like if Chris had just sat back and done nothing all game, which I don't think she should have done. Like, I think that she would have just been brought along. Like if she just played up the role of like, I'm just a sweet Louisiana girl and I just want to, you know, get a car and a house. Like they would have brought her to the end and let her win. I think. Whereas she wanted to play too hard and play too strategic a game, which I do appreciate. But I think that's ultimately what cost her is like she got caught up in lies. She kind of threw out who her alliances were. Um, And yeah, I think that's what kind of switched on Nicole and Hardy to be like, well, we can't let Chris win this game. 
and she was playing a strategic game, but obviously it wasn't perfect. Or even a, it was a good strategic game, but for the game she, like that they're playing right now in BB2, it's too much. And I agree with your point. There's definitely a line where if you cross that line, it's like, oh, you, there's no going back. You're a perceived threat, and that's that. And not only that, but then she's saying Monaco should win the money, when in reality, Crystal also needs that money and could set her own family up. It's yeah. like, girl, you need that too, and you could have won for the same reasons you're saying Monica could win. So I agree. She definitely just like went too far with the strategy. Yeah. But again, I do appreciate it as well. It's very entertaining. She's a very entertaining character through and through. It started with Justin putting a freaking saying he was going to hit, like, knock her brains out, which is insane, to now have Krista be going out as like a strategic threat. That's, a, again, another great progression of characters here of a show that's taped live and edited basically on the fly. So we have a, a lot of scenes of Monica and Krista in the hot tub kind of telling people a piece of their mind. Uh, but I, my favorite part was when Monica was explaining that it's on has different levels. Like there's different levels when she says, you know, sometimes it's on. It's like she's a little bit ticked off, but sometimes it's on. And like she is like going to come for you. She's going to she's gonna vote you out. She's going to wait. Yes. Um, so I thought that was funny. Um, and Will uh, says about Chris and Monica that uh, it doesn't behoove him to argue with the two dumbest people he's ever met. Yeah, <laughs> I heard on that quote too. Love it. Yikes. Um, I also appreciated that Monica in one of her interviews was saying, I'm a bad bitch. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, you are, girl. <laughs> you go big. Yeah. Well, and she also calls Will. I think Krista calls Will a bitch, too. I think Chris is like, yeah. come here, bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're so well, funny. I think that was when, when Krista was like, Will, bring me my beer, bitch. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. When they're just chilling in the hot tub laying back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're great. Those three really are the fun. Like, I don't know if they're the funniest, but they're definitely, I think Monica's the funniest, the hidden gem of this season. I would love for her to watch her every season because she's so she's so funny. I don't even know what she means to be. Just the way she says shit is so funny. She, like, reminds me of one of my old coworkers where she's, like, just so straightforward. But, like, the way that she's straightforward and the way that she says things, like, it just cracks me up. Like, my one coworker used to call any patient of ours, like, over the age of 70, grandma. She'd be like, come on, <laughs> call the grandma. And it was like, not in a mean way. She wasn't like, oh, you're such a grandma. But, like, I could see Monica doing that where she's yes. like, oh, move over here, grandma. <laughs> Come on. I'm dead. Yeah. She's like, ma'am, I'm 40. <laughs> well, I mean, Nicole calls people daddy. Is that kind of the same thing? Or? Uh, listen. Yeah, but it's it, in the same wheelhouse for sure. Yeah, same wheelhouse as grandma. Yeah. Definitely the same category of kinks, but I don't know if we're at that level. Yeah. Well, uh, Krista and Monica are nominated. I feel like Krista took it surprisingly well considering all the events of the week, but Monica is still pretty PO'd, and she says, like, Nicole promised to finish off Chilltown, and she did not follow through on that, which can't blame her for saying that because it's totally true. Like, Hardy and uh, Nicole, I feel like it called out a lot in these episodes of, like, you know, you said you were going to do this, and then you don't do it, um, and that's totally valid, but, like, then everyone is still admitting that these two are running the game and that no one's going to stand up to them. It's like, they are outnumbered. Like, if everybody teamed up against Hardy and Nicole, like, you guys would have the numbers to do whatever you wanted, but um, that's how good of a game they're playing, you know, collectively. So we go into episode 18. Um, I, I, Will said Nicole and I have an Ike and Tina relationship, which I thought was a little bit cringy. I'm like, I, I don't know what was happening in 2001, but I feel like even then, like Will kind of knew that this was probably not a good reference to make. Not good, not good at all. He's like, you know, Ike and Tina have their up and downs, like Nicole and I. I'm like, not exactly the same. <laughs> it's definitely different. Yeah. We'd hope at least. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, and so this cool. is where we get the uh, we're both attracted to me, mm -hmm. and uh, Nicole says that uh, Will is totally honest with her. So some interesting some interesting perspectives from both of them. So is that perhaps Will and Nicole do not have as good of pulses as they think that they do? Right. On the game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not too much happens in this episode. Yeah. Obviously, like Monica. We get introduced to Sweet Nasty. Uh, and we get this weird news luxury comp, which I don't know about you guys. I don't really watch the news that much. Like, I guess social media is kind of like my news now. Um, but I would have no interest in, like, looking at a room of of newspapers. <laughs> like, I don't know about yeah. you guys. Yeah. I Yeah. I mean, like, I guess, like, we're in such a fast-paced world now that I guess, like, if I was out there, this is, like, the second month or whatever, right? Second month it should be in the middle of it. Like. Yeah. That's a lot. I feel like for our news cycle, where we're at now, like, it's completely different. Just because, like, I feel like, again, like, the second time I'm mentioning it in the podcast, but 9-11, like, drastically changed the 
news cycle where it's like now everyone feels like everything constantly has to be a news story. And now like we have legitimate news stories where it's like, yes, it's 24 seven, but it's justified with like, you know, the protests and coronavirus and X, Y, Z. So if I went into the house, like now, like if like Big Brother, like coronavirus clears up and I go into the Big Brother house tomorrow, like miraculously, I would be like, yo, show me that room. But it'd probably be like a Twitter feed. Like you have three minutes and you get to check every trending hashtag on Twitter for the past two months. That would be something. Because I'd be like, um, why is Katy Perry canceled? Or why is the survivor blocked on everyone's Twitter? You know what I mean? Like shit like that. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting because I think it's easy for us to be like, oh, it's not that big of a deal, like this luxury competition. But if you think about like six weeks ago, if you were to just like shut off all connection to the outside world six weeks ago, like the things that you would have missed would be gigantic. Yeah. And then if you were to just come into the world like today with, you know, everything that's going on, um, right. like it would be startling. So I think... Yeah. You know, in, in reality, yeah, the news cycle was definitely slower back then without social media being, you know, so prominent. But um, I could definitely relate to just wanting to know what's going on with, you know, current events in the world and getting that connection. I did think it was funny, some of the fake um, headlines, like yeah. Oprah Winfrey buys the Chicago Cubs or, <laughs> you know, I think it's one of them where it's yeah. like, oh, yeah. yeah. Was there any, any but, but, headlines like the second I asked you guys that were true or false besides the Oprah Winfrey one? The way they, honestly, the Oprah one was iconic. The, uh, Andre Agassi, like I like vaguely know tennis, but like not that much. But the way they worded that question had me dead. It was like this actress has Andre Agassi's baby, and I was like, well, why didn't you just say they had a kid? Right. <laughs> like, the was way it? they worded it. <laughs> it's Steffi Graf, right? Which isn't she yeah. a tennis player too? She is a tennis player, and that's why I was like, okay, they're both famous, and like I guess that's why it's cute. But the way they worded it had me dead. Like I guess like they're not, they probably weren't married at the time. I don't know if they are now or whatever. It doesn't really matter. But the way they worded it, I was like, yeah, okay. it was like Andre Agassi totally announces, agree. yeah, Andre, yeah. Andre Agassi announces that he's having that Steffi Graf is having his baby, and I'm like, <laughs> so, that, is, that is a really weird way. I, like, I think that that's that kind of like a little bit to do with the times because I think. Yeah. You know, like it's the fact that it's like this 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 woman is having this man's baby, you yeah. know, rather than them having a baby together, it's like this man's baby. Yeah. Um so yeah, I think that it's like a little bit to do with just period wise where we're at then versus today with everything like that. Oh, I don't know. That's long I, I'm not gonna get into it. No, yeah, yeah. I also have a really fun, it's not a fun fact, it's kind of dark, but it's it's a cool moment. Mike Mike Piazza, I'm a huge Mets fan because I live in New York and my dad's from the Bronx and his, my uncle worked, my great uncle worked for the Mets. So like that's how I, I have a really, like I love the Mets. Mike Piazza is probably my favorite baseball player of all time. This is pre 9-11, which is my third time saying that this podcast. But why it's important is Mike Piazza is like the best catcher of all time. Like he is dope, dude, really great dude. There's two things that come out of this. Around this time, there is a there is a scandal, quote unquote, I think it was the next year, where people thought Mike Piazza was gay because he was such a nice guy that he had to come out and have a news conference and say, guys, I'm not gay. I'm just sleeping around with women. That's basically what the precipice of the, the, the news conference was. But the more heartwarming piece of news is that the first baseball game, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but the first baseball game that was played after 9-11 was in Queens at Shea Stadium. And Mike Piazza hit a home run in the eighth inning to put the Mets ahead. And it was like a really sentimental moment. It was like the start point of like New York getting to reopen. I think flights open that day or that night. And then America was kind of like, OK, we rally behind baseball, and we rally behind sports. And the Mets were really good at this time. So like to see Dr. Will just be like they're like oh, Bunky was like, I got the gay question. You got the baseball question. And Dr. Oh, Will yeah. was like, Dr. Will was like, Mike Piazza is not the MVP of the All-Star game. And it was like true. I was like, fuck you, Dr. Will. You don't even know what's about to happen. In six <laughs> like you don't even know what's about to happen in six months, but you don't even know what's about to happen in like Mike Piazza's life in like six months. Yeah, it was really touching. Yeah, and we get the uh, we get the answer to the America's Choice question about the backyard <laughs> item. <laughs> so uh, the options were a porch swing, a heavy bag, which I feel like that was a weird way to word it, a heavy yeah. bag, uh, right. new grass, a swing set, an exercise bike, or a trampoline. Um, and I feel like a uh, new grass and trampoline were the ones that really stuck out out of that group. 
Um, and they were threatening Bunky that they were going to shave his entire body if they ended up getting grass, which I was like, oh, please get grass, please get grass. <laughs> but also, like, that would have been, like, they kind of go into it, I think it was either, I think it might have been at the beginning of episode 19 or the end of this one, where they're talking about Bunky, like, checking himself out. They're like, ooh, hunky yeah. Bunky. And, like, oh, that would have been, like, not that he needs to change himself, because I thought Bunky was perfect the way he was. Seriously, the way he came in. I was like, oh, Bunky's attractive. He's a cute dude. Like, whatever. But, like, if he really wants to complete the transition, shave your whole body and let's really let's really show your boyfriend or husband start what's up. Shaving your, uh, start shaving your armpits, Bucky. Take the, a, another like, honest, Dr. Wills thing. Yes. Sha- like, start brushing the eyebrows. Mm-hmm. And get the whole Hunky Bunky compilation was one of my favorite compilations that we got through this chunk of episodes. Um, and also, I will say, while I would have loved to see them get green grass on the outside and, like, shave Hunky Bunky's whole body, I was very happy and surprised that they got the trampoline because just seeing them at the end jumping on the trampoline like children, I just, I mean, everybody loves a good bounce on a trampoline. It was, like, nice to see. Yeah, see them, like, you know, Krista was, like, so excited, so she, like, went and woke up Will, and then Will was just, like, a little kid, like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think, like, this also goes to show, like, in the first set of episodes we watched, or maybe the second Julie was saying that the most popular house guest from the internet was Hardy and that Will was the least popular. So to just to see, like, I think that part of the reason they got the trampoline is because I think America is starting to fall in love with Will. Like, yes. he has really kind of shifted uh, from being kind of like the mean, like, hot guy bully to being like this fun, villainous underdog that just adds so much loving to the season. So, yeah, I think the trampoline was an indicator of that. It was yes. cute. And Ophelia, was, like, that whole sequence when, like, Ophelia, like, got out of bed, squealed, and then, like, ran towards the trampoline, out, the trampoline, I was like, oh, my God, Ophelia is excited for it, too. Yeah. <laughs> Ophelia is so cute. I love her so much. It made me want a little Uh So, episode 19, we have the first live eviction vote of the season. What did you guys think of the live eviction votes compared to the uh, pre-taped eviction votes? It was cool. It was cool seeing what it was like back then, too. Um, cause that's like a staple going forward or at least like in future seasons. Um, it definitely adds something to it too. Definitely another layer of yeah. like, funness. Yeah. I, don't know. I, I felt pretty neutral about it to be honest with you. Like some parts I feel like live, like just the whole, I mean, it was endearing, but Bunky sitting there like bawling while he was trying to get out the name yeah. of Krista, you know, I was like, if this was done previously, we could have just like x this whole thing out or like just gotten a smaller part of it like there were a couple of times where i was like this is dragging on a little bit long like i'd rather get some other content can we please move forward um that's true but i I didn't mind it i thought it was definitely interesting to see what people are doing like in the moment and seeing that like the vote very much i mean it wasn't really still up in the air but like technically people hadn't voted and it could have been whoever yeah yeah the bunkies vote was so awkward i was just like i can hardly even watch this it's so (laughs) cringy yeah yeah, and I'm I'm a crier. Like I'm not judging him for crying. Like I cry all the time. I get it. But it, it was a little much in the context of the show. Where I was like, "You're playing a game. Krista will still be friends with you later. We're fine." Exactly. Well, I, think, I, I think at least I don't know about the rest of the season, but definitely for next season, they don't ask people, "Oh, why did you vote that way?" They just just vote for who you want and then leave because maybe Bunky ruined it for everybody. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. I mean, he was just like full on sobbing in the diary room, like inconsolable. But <laughs> I can't. We love you, Bunky. Yeah. We do love Bunky. Uh, we had a, another great Will moment that I had to highlight is uh, they were asking people, what would you do with the money if you won? And there's just like a ton of heartfelt answers. Like Krista wants to like get a marble tombstone for her mom. Uh, right. Like, uh, Nicole and Jeff want to want to get a house, and like Monica wants to pay off her her father's house, and Will says that he wants to buy gold chains for his friends and get jet skis. So, <laughs> Will is such a prick. I can't deal with him. He's, it's I, I know he's not kidding at this point, but I want him to be kidding so bad. <laughs> like, also, so I know Mike Boogie definitely has a gold chain already, right? Like Mike Boogie yeah. doesn't need, doesn't. Need There's it. no way Mike Boogie Boogie exists without having a good gold chain. That's yeah. all. Uh, we have a little bit of focus on Nicole's journey, which I know we've already talked a lot about Nicole, but we haven't really talked about her using cooking as a strategy, which actually, un- like, surprisingly, comes up in a few more Big Brother seasons of like, no one wants to vote out the person who's making everybody food. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. And obviously, peanut butter and jelly sometimes inhibits that. But I just wanted to point out that like, uh, that's just another like layer on top of Nicole's game is is that she's cooking for people. It's similar like a Rupert or an Aussie with right. um, 
fishing for the tribe, you know, it's like the same kind of thing. Like, yeah, I would love to have some nice home cooked meals. Um, Even like I'm spacing on what Survivor player it was, but a few seasons ago, there was somebody who was a chef um, on Survivor where he was making like some caramelized like coconut with the rice, you know, I'm forgetting who it was, but there was somebody whose big thing was like, I'm going to elevate the rice out here and like make the the food as good as possible. Oh my God, you're right. right. I can't remember it. It wasn't Ozzy, was it? Because I feel like Ozzy and Game Changers was kind of a chef, but... I'm, like, pretty sure that he was Asian or, like, a Pacific Islander-looking man who was a chef at a restaurant. It wasn't, like, a Jonah from One World, was it? (laughs) Oh, my... Jonas? Jonas. It's possible. He was a sushi chef, but anyways, that was, like, I mean... We're going to have to get into it later, but, yeah, it's still, like, it's, it's definitely a strategy. Happy to be it used in a different um, way on Big Brother, but a lot of the strategy definitely overlaps between Big Brother and Survivor, for sure. Um, Going to the votes, we obviously we see Bunky and Will both vote to evict Krista, Um, and they both basically say it's because they fear Hardy and Nicole, which, like, they could have changed this vote if they had been on the same page. If Sweet Nasty was, like, a real alliance, they had actually been talking, like, maybe they would have realized that they could have taken control of the game by voting out Monica and getting Krista on their side because I feel like that is like a very viable option for them. Yeah, I think in general, it it really surprised me. This, I mean, this vote in general surprised me. I mean, Krista was my winner picks. Like it seemed like she was playing a decent social game and people liked her enough. Um, But it surprised me because I feel like people just kind of let Nicole dictate, like just let Nicole and Hardy dictate this vote. They were like both Will and Bunky were like, I'm having to vote this person because that's what Nicole is saying to do. And I'm just going with Nicole. But if Hardy and Will had gone together as sweet nasty and been like, no, let's like go against Nicole and Hardy and take some power away from them. I think that that would have been like the wise thing to do. And then like you said, they could have been like, Krista, we saved you, like come work with us. And they would have had, you know, a pretty decent alliance there. That would have been fun too. Like now that you say it, I'm like, damn, that could have been like a really fun move to make. Not that, like, you know, I guess, like, the Krista boot is still, like, interesting, but it's not at the same time. It's very straightforward, unfortunately. Right. Yeah. Like, people were torn, but they were still never going to vote. Yeah. Okay. So. Right. Yeah, and Monica is, like, beside herself about Krista leaving, <laughs> and she says that, uh, you know, people sold their soul to the devil. And we get a lot of this kind of, like, self-righteousness with both, you know, Kent's boot and Krista's. It's kind of like Ken and Krista were both, like playing the game really hard like they were both really good at the game in my opinion and it's just it's when somebody else is strategizing and you're left out of it that it's like oh well I'm more honorable than you and like I would never do this so I'm not going to sell my soul to the devil to like you know get half a million dollars but they were just doing it last week so I don't like the hypocrisy of all of that but agreed right like it was okay when she was doing it but then when it right. was like spotlight on her it was it was no longer okay Mm -hmm. yeah and I think Krista does have probably more reason than Ken to be upset just because people were telling her that they were like playing for her to win um yeah and and Krista kind of like sticks the knife and will a little bit and says you know like Mike Boogie like wanted you to protect me and you said that you would and um so really she was uh she was going down like rubbing salt in the wounds for sure yeah also Speaking of Mike Boogie, the fact that Mike Boogie was one of the loved ones after Krista got booted. Yes. I was like, this is probably just because this is a low budget move. Like you just have to drive (laughs) him there from like another part of LA. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Yeah. He like lives down the street probably. Yeah. The bar was apparently up the street, like in the different neighborhood, but like close to it. So he probably literally is in that neighborhood. Like that's a, I didn't even think of that. I was like, oh, haha, it's like tongue in cheek, like bring out Boogie. But no, yeah. like, that's probably literally what it was. <laughs> right, yeah. It was super weird how Julie, like, alluded to the Justin incident in the X interview, but, like, then just, like, totally just left it as a cliffhanger for Krista. She's like, do you remember what happened the night that, like, Justin got expelled from the house? And Chris is like, uh, no, not really. And Julie's like, well, we'll tell you later. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, I would have loved to see her live reaction. Right. Or if we're not going to do that, just don't mention it. Right. I yes. don't know what happened. Yeah. Yes. And also, like, it could have been, like, she could have had, like, a really big reaction to it. Like, you don't know how she's going to react. Like, it could have yeah. been very, like, traumatized by it. So yeah. maybe just tell her off the air and, like, don't tease the audience with, like, I don't, this right. weird flipping her question. But yes. totally. that. Um, and the other only other thing of note from that interview is that she said if Nicole's in the end, she won't win, but she's played a really good game. And so I'm just oh. like, 
Yeah. Okay, cool. You, you know you acknowledge that she's a really good player, but you aren't going to vote for her in the end. But so, also, yeah. she hasn't even talked to the jury yet. So to me, that's why I was like, I still think Nicole has a shot against like, yeah. anyone but Will, I would say. Be- I think she could still get votes against Will, obviously. But like, you don't, you haven't talked to the jury yet. Like, you don't know. What, I mean, Boogie would vote for a Will, but you know what Boogie's going to vote for otherwise. Same thing with these other people that have been out for so long. Like, doesn't, Cheryl still has a vote, right? Like, Sherry still has a vote. Yeah. So it's like she's been out for so long. And like, I think the closest person she was to was like Monica and Krista. So now it's like, well, here we are. It's like, who's she going to vote for if Monica's not in the end? So you, you can't even say that. Right. Like, like at Krista, not you, Luke. Right. <laughs> say what I want, Pat. You can say exactly what you want. <laughs> but yeah, this, this was a very, this was like a fascinating set of episodes. I'm really glad that this is where we divided it. I'm mm-hmm. so excited. Like, the last clip, like, the last set of episodes, I wasn't excited to watch these two rounds. I'm excited for, like, I guess this is our last set of episodes, right? Up until the finale? Yeah, I mean, I think we can either, we can probably either make it into one episode or two episodes either way. Right. Um, Because I know, like, the yeah. next two episodes aren't, they, like, we have a head of household competition, but, like, we aren't going to see nominations, I don't think, in the next two episodes. Okay. Uh, and it's because, like, Justin being expelled from the house just messed up, like, the number of episodes, like, when the dates of everything are. Um, so that's why it's a little bit switched around. But, yeah, I feel like we can probably do it all in one episode if you guys want to. Right. Yeah. So, we can talk about that later. But regardless, any last thoughts yeah. on uh, this chunk of episodes and maybe predictions moving forward? So who, uh, who's your winner pick right now, Pat? I have to. I I stayed with Will through last set of episodes. I have to keep it going because I feel like, if, especially if we are going to the finale, that's kind of why I wanted to clarify it. I feel like if it, we weren't going to the finale, I would throw someone else in. But I I think he's winning. I I just see it happening. Um, I won't even yeah. give a. I wouldn't even give like a backup plan. I'll just say Will, just in case you have someone else. But who do you think? Um, I think Will has got a good shot, which pains me to say. But yeah. um, I'm also gonna throw in Nicole. Yes. That was my number two. I think two. there are two front runners right now. Pat, if Will does win the game, does that increase the chances that him and Shannon stay together? If he wins the game. So my that's so I guess that's a question I asked for us too. Like I just don't see Will and Shannon. I thought Will and Shannon, like I was like, oh cute, showman's love it. But like I don't see that happening. I don't see that happening. And for one reason I don't too is because Big Brother and Survivor are so intertwined at this point. And I feel like Robin Amber was made to be such a huge deal when they first like they got to the final two together. That like in All Stars, which is a couple years, like two or three years later, I feel like they they would have been compared to Will and Shannon at some point. Like I feel like that would have come up, but maybe not. Maybe Will and Shannon are happily married with kids now. I don't know. I kind of see Will as being like a bachelor type that probably still is not married, but we'll see. I don't know. That's just, he loves to talk about all of his lady friends. So, I mean, I have an answer to that, but I don't know if you guys want to know. I don't know. Do we, let's wait until after the season is over. That'll be one of our post season. Yes, please. Gotcha. Yeah, I'll get the goss and all the house guests and what happens. Yes. Like, where are they now? We'll do a whole yes. thing. Right. Yeah, please do, like, a where are they now presentation that doesn't include any spoilers. Please. Yeah, okay, cool. I'll get a slideshow ready. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, so Cassie, right. who do you think has a better shot? Will and Shannon or Krista and Boogie? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, definitely Will and Shannon. I don't think Krista and Boogie, like, stand a shot in hell, but we'll see. I could be proven wrong. <laughs> Krista does sound like she wants to get out of Louisiana, maybe, so... You know, if she's one of the ones with the agents and, like, wants to get famous, maybe she'll move out to L.A. with Boogie. But yeah. she also has an 11-year-old at home. And I can't see Boogie being a stepdad to an <laughs> 11-year-old kid. No, so. definitely not. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I would yeah. I would have – Will and Shannon would have to be my vote, too, because I just feel like, for the same reason, I don't think Boogie leaves L.A. And I know you said last week, like, his, like, legal troubles – which could happen anywhere. That could happen in Louisiana. And I would argue it's probably more likely to happen down there. But, like, at the same time, like, L.A. just see, Boogie is L.A. Like, L.A. is Boogie. Like, I couldn't yeah. imagine him leaving. And I couldn't There's imagine Krista. Yeah, and, like, Krista's the other L.A. She's Louisiana. So, like, I couldn't imagine her leaving. But, I mean, I would love for Will and Shannon to, like, get married and have, like, little athletic, hot-ass kids. Like, that's probably, that'd probably be fun. Like, a fun storyline. Well, guys, any more thoughts? I'm just pumped to see what happens. I yes. want to know who wins. I feel like all of these people I feel attached to in various ways. So yes. 
we'll see. Especially yeah. Now. It's going to get hard going forward. This was the first tough elimination, I think, for me with Krista going yeah. home. Yeah. So I think it's going to get even tougher going forward. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I, I will say the ending is not boring for sure. So. Oh, God, yeah. That's even better. Right. <laughs> well, guys, um, check out the links in the bio. We have our Twitter page, which is newly named. We also have the gracious person who created our new logo. That link will be in the bio as well. Um, we'll probably, probably stick to like a bi-weekly type schedule for previously on Big Brother. But next week, you can uh, expect some Total Drama Island 1 coverage from probably me, Luke, and JC uh, via our wheel spin. So you'll see that. And then a, a couple weeks after that, you'll see another wheel spin. And we'll keep it going there with some coverage of all things reality TV. So if you made it this far, subscribe, leave a comment of what else you'd like to see on that wheel and what your thoughts on the episodes in this set were. Otherwise, guys, I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye, guys.